Yeah, hello, good afternoon. I'm very happy to be invited to see these young faces. I have been at Santa Anselmo in Rome, always among young people from all over the world, because I was also the great chancellor of our university there. And this was very inspiring for me. Now I am more among older people, but nevertheless, we, in my mother's story, we have also young people in a big school. So thank you for your kind invitation. <clears throat> I wanted to sit down here to be more or less on your level because I'm still in my learning phase. Uh, I have been in leadership for 39 years, but uh, you are always learning. And I would say, with, regard, with regards to meaningful leadership, the secret of meaningful leadership is the personality of the leader. It's not the organization. I understand under management more the organizational part of leadership. But a leader is more because it's always relationship among people. I found it so nice to see here this talk uh, when you have to talk to someone and you invite someone to come and you say, please come in. But the first moment is already so important, the contact. When you receive someone in your office, you shouldn't sit behind and wait that someone is coming close to you. And you offer him a chair or a place, a seat, and from this moment on, there is nothing in the room but your partner, the art of listening. The other one must have the impression that he is the only or she is the only important person now in this, uh, in this room. And therefore it's important that you don't go to the phone, that you don't take your your cell phone, it's horrible that nowadays, for example, also at table, people are looking at their emails or at their apps, what's coming in. I had two occasions already when I uh, got up from a table and said, thank you for your kind invitation, but I, it seems that I'm not important, bye-bye. I think we have simply to tell it, it, people to know who we are. So the personality of a leader, the first thing is you have to have a vision. I still remember when we started a strategic process, strategic process of our university had come down to a lower number and our professors, you know how professors are, they are in their small box, they don't see outside, and they said, yeah, that's normal, that's the same in other universities. And I said, that's not, in I'm not interested. I want to see a growth in our university again. You have to streamline your, your courses, you have to get into, into connection with other universities, you have to start networking and so on. And then we started our process for six months. We had our strategic plan afterwards and we continued to work on that. Within four years, we came from 320 students to 600 students. So nearly the double. And that in theology, which is not easy nowadays. <laughs> Nevertheless, so I said, now you can work. I leave Santa Anselmo. I had an interesting role as a leader of the Benedictine Order. The Benedictine Order is not a real order, it's a disorder. <laughs> <laughs> because each monastery remains autonomous. 
And there are groups of Benedictine monasteries or communities, we call them congregations with the president on top, and they are all bound together in a confederation. So, and the Abbot Primate, that was my job, is uh, uh, supposed to be the highest representative, but he should unify the order and foster collaboration without any juridical, juridical means, but just by your personality. And that means you need a vision so that you can convince people. And you need to observe continuously, reflect continuously. And you have also to have a soul of an entrepreneur. Yet, not everyone has that. It's also a natural gift. And you must be burning of enthusiasm. How will you kindle other people if you are not burning? So, then you must be completely convinced of your philosophy. Of course, <clears throat> I cannot study this kind of philosophy in some school, but I was formed, that my, was my first business in philosophy. We all have to be somehow philosophers, to lean back and reflect, observe, to be curious, to be, yeah, I would say, uh, like a little child, always curious, never be content. Also in your business, please never be content. You can always improve it, but you must have an aim in front of you, that you want to be the level best and to give you the level best. But then, as a leader, you must know that you are in service of other people. You have to be humble. You are not a big boss, but you are in service of your company, or you are in service of the other people, not only of the company, but the company should be the, the this community of people. And to work together, to hold them together, <clears throat> we have a natural, a vision of that, it's a family or an organism. To give you also an idea, I was standing some day in my monastery, we have a big printing press, six colors, I was standing there watching, and I said, all these little wheels, when they function well, then the machine is going well, is doing fine. And this, in, in the past, has been the idea of a monastery also. Everyone has to fulfill his duty, and that's it. Nobody interested how well your neighbor is feeling. Like stones next to each other, or perhaps even like trees, but you are an organism. And I told always my people, <coughs> listen, I'm not the monastery. I'm not the Abbey. We all are the Abbey. And I said the same in the university. I'm not the big boss. We all are the university. We have to collaborate. You have to give them a sense of belonging together. That's what you need to do. And therefore, you have to go around. You have to move. Uh, and. Uh, to move around, to talk people on the corridor in many ways, to be to show your interest and to be present and never get offended, even if you get some stupid ideas. <laughs> and I would say the leader of such a company, of course you have to be open-minded, flexible, and nevertheless the endurance. But when I was asked once, uh, what is your real job in this order, where you have no uh, juridical authority? I said, have you ever seen the movie uh, with, um, My Fair Lady? There, 
this lady is standing in Ascot, at, also at the horse race, and her horse is not moving fast, and she is crying into this fine society. Put the pepper in his ass. And I said, that's my duty in our Benedictine. <laughs> this, you see, this gives some meaning to your work. And it shows where it should go on. Now you have to give the meaning to the individual collaborators. In our Benedict, rule of Benedict, he says, there is, should be no distinction of persons. I have just taken a few quotations. He, there, there should be no distinction of persons in the monastery. Let not one be loved more than another, except he is found to surpass the rest in good works and in obedience. No uh, distinction, whether bondmen or freemen, we are all one in Christ. That's the background, the philosophical and religious background. For with God, there is no accepting of persons. There is no difference. Of course, some are more sympathetic to you than other ones. But then, what helps me, I, when some people are coming to me and I say, oh gosh, he is not the, or she is not the right one for me. But then I reflect a bit and I say, but this one is also created by God. And I say, oh God, what have you thought when you create? <laughs> and why do you send them to me? <laughs> And the answer is to increase your patience. <laughs> and you see, this helped me so much. I built a hospital in North Korea. And I was sitting in front of such a policeman or men of the party, decorated here. I said, oh, great. He must have done some great things to get all these decorations. Smiling for myself. But then I said to me the same. Also, this man has been created by God. And is unfortunately still loved by God as I am loved by God. It's not his fault that he was born here and grown up here. And you know, by this way, this changes the whole atmosphere. This non-verbal non communication. And people always ask me, or very often ask me, how did you succeed to build a hospital there? And to build also the extension. And in China, in mainland China, I built also a 500-bed hospital. And I had to deal with these people. I always tried to find out where is the block? Why is my, my partner blocking? He said, for example, we are here in Tutsin, where there are the Benedictine sisters, and I wanted to bring them to China, to the hospital. And he said, that's impossible in China, according to law. It's not possible that you bring Catholic sisters, religious sisters. I said, but listen, uh, you have here Audi and VW, uh, you have the, the, the plants, and are you controlling what those people are doing in their free time? Are you, if they are going to cinema, or if they are playing golf, or what? No, he said. He said, okay, why can, uh, can, uh, can you not allow sisters to work here? if they bring the know-how to the hospital, and if they live together and pray together, that's not your business, that's my business. And he watched me and said, oh, you are right. <laughs> and so it was the only place where religious sisters were allowed to work. Later on, we withdrew again, 
because I said now they can do it on their, uh, for themselves. Development aid, and they have more money. Development aid means that they may uh, help themselves afterwards. So that uh, shows you, just gives you a short example. And what I always try, especially in China, to take away the fear of your partner. People are afraid when they see you. Perhaps when I'm like this. But I'm also dealing with my Muslim friends in Jordan and also in Iran. There are no problems. You just must open up and listen. The, art, the best talk is when you are listening. And after half an hour, when the other one has talked, he will tell you, oh, it's so easy to talk with you. <laughs> and also when you are on the phone, please never do anything else. Especially when women sense it very, uh, feel it very well. When, you're, when a man is hanging on the phone and she is talking very really long, then uh, you, are, you are in danger to read something. And she feels it right away and she tells it to you. And so you must completely address the other one and give him a meaning, the sense of you are someone. You are important. I think that's the most important thing in collaboration. And then it's far easier to collaborate with all kind of people, even if they are not so beautiful or if they are not so well dressed. But uh, I just want to quote two more things here of our rule. The Abbot St. Benedict says, let him consider how difficult and hard a task he has uh, undertaken to govern souls and to accommodate himself to the humors of many, some of whom must be led by fair speeches, others by sharp reprehensions, and others by persuasions. You must find out the real way of dealing. After a while, you need some time. You know people and you know how uh, to deal and how to take out the best way of someone, of your partners, of your collaborators. And the best way is you must love your people. That's so important. They must feel they are appreciated, they are loved by you. And then you have a good collaboration and never try to manipulate another person. She will feel it right away or be afraid. And fear is the most horrible thing in collaboration because that blocks. That's what they are trying to set up again in Europe, the walls, because they are afraid of each other. Instead of being open, come on, if there are problems, let's talk about it. So, St. Benedict says in his rule, the abbot has to hate the mistakes, but love the brothers. If he has to correct, he should be wise and not go too far, or the vessel might break. The bruised reed must not be broken. He is looking, uh, he should look far more to be loved than to be, <clears throat> to be feared. And in order to do that, uh, it looks so easy, it's not so easy. Therefore, there's a special art, the art of discretion. The right measure, <clears throat> the modesty, this is the mother of all virtues. And it, so he should arrange everything that the strong ones find what they are looking for and the weak ones are not running away. That's the art, I would say. And in the end, also the leader should be happy. And he says, he shouldn't be tempestuous, not timid, not excessive, nor narrow-minded, not jealous, or too suspicious, otherwise he will never rest. 
And you should also have a nice human hobby as I have my, uh, my traverse flute for classical music, but also for, of course, for uh, Jan Anderson. And you can find me in you on YouTube under my name, also with, uh, with Deep Purple on stage playing the smoke <laughs> on the water. And that's what I want to put always where I'm going to leave some smoke. Bye bye. <laughs>